Let's go from around the world and across the web, your chance to ask the advisor. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever it is, wherever you are. Matt Case is our weekly one-on-one -on -one with the CEO and founder of Quantum Economics, Marty Greenspan continues. You can get the newsletter, it's always free, quantumeconomics.io. And are you interested in Bitcoin mining? Well, then you should talk to the friends right over there. Or is it over there? Or somewhere. Quantum Expeditions, not financial advice, but a darn good life suggestion. All right, Marty, how are you, buddy? Morning, Matt, and uh, good morning, DGENs. Uh, one year after uh, the collapse of Silicon Valley Bank, uh, we see banks again in trouble. This time, New York uh, Community Bank Corp um, has crashed. You can see this article, beautiful article in the Financial Times. Um, and this and this graph basically shows it all. Uh, this is NYCB, the blue line. The red line is bank index and the S&P uh, 1500. Just grinding, just, just going higher on the news. So basically showing that nobody cares. Um, the article goes on to say that, you know, obviously just as the title implies, it won't be the last rate incident, uh, rate accident. So it's definitely blaming the Fed for this. And what I really love about this, even though it's the Financial Times who notoriously hates crypto, it says, good morning, Bitcoin maintained its new record highs for all of two hours, and then it gets cynical about Bitcoin, but it knows that a, an article about the bank, uh, about banks crashing, um, is ultimately good for Bitcoin, even though they say uh, that it's not. Um, here's another article. Uh, this is actually from last week saying why economists are warning another U.S. banking crisis. Um, and this goes into the BTFP, which is basically, if you'll remember when uh, Silicon Valley Bank went down, uh, the Fed whipped out a special program giving banks preferential terms on, uh, on loans. That is actually ending on Monday, this Monday, the 11th. So that, along with you know the quantitative tightening, um, is going to be putting pressure on banks going forward. In other news, the Egyptian pound plummeted yesterday. The e Egyptian central bank manipulated their interest rates. Uh, big whoop. But if we look at the chart, here's the Egyptian pound against the U.S. dollar. Big red dildo candlestick. Um, that's a total of 37 to 38 percent plummet in one single day. Um, but if we, you know, zoom out, oh, there we go. Let's say even just over the course of the last few years, I think this chart goes back to 2014, 2013. Uh, the Egyptian pound is down 86%. Um, Bitcoin adoption has not yet kicked off really in Egypt. Uh, by 2021, there was only 1.8% uh, Bitcoin users. However, um, you know, with these type of this type of currency devaluation, um, it does seem inevitable. First question comes from Paul on X. It says people are crazy. Everyone is talking about a crash, a pullback. Maybe they noticed that it's up 50% from last month. What other investments give you that kind of ROI? What do you think about what Paul has to say? Yeah, that's an excellent point, Paul. Thanks for your question. As we can see. Bitcoin is up 305% since the start of 2023. So yeah, you really don't generally get these type of gains in other asset classes and even you know, um, Bitcoin not even being the most impressive of the cryptocurrencies. And then the pullback that you mentioned, um, that's, coming, that's coming off. We have a very uh, difficult resistance right now with the all time high. Of course, the all-time high is going to be different. The exact all-time high is going to be different on different exchanges. Some of them have already busted it, and some of them have not yet. I'm just using 69,420 as like a generic all-time high. I think that we can, you know, we have, we do have the potential to blast through that level. That's when you know you'll start seeing the headlines in, in mainstream media. But you know, the the point of of any market, you know, is to buy low and sell high. And when we're testing an all-time high like this. Um, you know, there are some people who are going to say, okay, well, now is my chance. Now is my chance to sell. Um, the reach, the total retracement though, peak to trough, total pullback, um, is only, it's still under 17%. And I have seen, you know, in previous bull runs, Bitcoin, uh, 
pull back even more than 70%. So 17% is pretty tame. That could be due to um, uh, high leverage trading getting liquidated, um, but it could also be due to uh, this dude over here who reportedly uh, mined a bunch of Bitcoin in 2010 um, and sold it now on the open market. So that's 14 years worth of hodling. That's heavy duty hodling. You know, good, good on you, man. I'm proud of you. Kind of crashed the party for everybody else. I kind of wish you would have um, layered your orders a bit better. But, you know, what can we do? That's, uh, that, that's how it works. And, you know, I'm happy for you, whoever you are. I hope you're, you're making some life-changing moves over there. Um, as for what's next, uh, you know, there is talk of a Dalai Lama pattern, which I don't know how this pattern got its name, but this is a very classic crypto pattern where you see a pullback, a retracement up to test the high, and then grind on into higher territory over here. So, um, knock on wood, hoping and praying that that happens for us. Question number two for you, Monty, comes from Toki on X. How much do you think the altcoin market will suffer because profits aren't being pulled off Bitcoin in the same way since it's now held by institutions? Yeah, that's an excellent question, Toki, and uh, thank you for asking. And thanks for all you're doing at Quantum Expeditions as well. Yes, no doubt Wall Street has been ramping up their activities in Bitcoin. Uh, we can see here on Monday, Wall Street traded nearly $10 billion uh, worth of volumes. And that is a lot. Um, still nowhere near what's been what's happening on chain itself. Here we can see the on chain volumes are at about twenty eight billion dollars per day. So Wall Street still has some catching up to do. And yes, a lot of the action and activity and excitement has been specifically surrounding Bitcoin rather than the altcoin market. We can see that Bitcoin's dominance has been rising pretty steadily throughout this bull run since so since the start of 2023 where it was at around 40 percent um it has now been above 50 percent so more than half of the value in cryptocurrencies is in bitcoin and has been for about six months now and that number does seem to be rising but i do reject your premise that altcoins are suffering there is no shortage of altcoins um that have, that are seeing triple digit gains over the last few months. I'm not gonna name any right now, but even meme coins are having a moment in the sun right now. So the, the thing is that a lot of altcoins are priced in Bitcoin. So when Bitcoin goes up, there's a very high correlation. As they say, a rising tide floats all boats and um, those boats that, that are smaller, more versatile, do tend to move faster once they have a bit of water underneath them. So um, I'm not going to tell you to trade any of them. Honestly, you know, if you, you know, if you're able to catch a good one, uh, great. But please understand that those are a lot more risky than Bitcoin is right now. So for those of you who are thinking long term, um, good on you, because that's how how more consistent gains are made. Yes, you hear about, you know, the person who put, you know, five hundred dollars in and, and, and made a million. But that but that only happens once in a blue moon. The ones that you don't hear about are the people who spend thousands of dollars trying to catch a meme coin and never actually hit a winner, or that they take it round trip, go all the way up and then come all the way down with it. Personally, I've got better things to do than spend my entire day watching it and seeing which meme coin um, might make it. But I do have a basket of alts that I believe are going to do well and that I'm holding for the long term.